everyone, it's Ross. Today we're gonna do a little bit of a winter tour before the sun goes down, hopefully. Uh, the sun is definitely almost gone, so I'll try to make this quick as I can. There's not really a whole lot to see, but I figure now that things are off the patio, the leaves are off the trees, you can really get a good idea, I guess, of the shape of things, how my trees are shaped, sized. You know, we can kind of talk about certain things as we go along. Um, you know, here's my cherry trees, white gold and black gold. And a lot of this stuff we still have yet to prune. I'll tell you guys what I've pruned and what I haven't. But these are semi-dwarfs and they are three or four years now on the ground, if I'm not mistaken. We had tried something where we planted these guys in containers in the ground. And if I dig down in here, you might be able to see the container. What does it look like? <laughs> How many rocks did I put down here? <laughs> I don't know, that's crazy, but take my word for it. We put, basically put, a, uh, put this in a 15, 20 gallon size pot, each of these trees, and then stuck that in the ground. And the whole purpose of me doing that, I don't recommend it now, of course, but uh, cherry trees do not like lots of water. They like a well-draining soil. And a lot of cherry trees will end up dying if um, you, have, you have a too wet of a soil. So what I've done is amended the soil in the container and then planted that container in the ground and then that way we've got a pretty well draining base at least along the trunk but in reality I'm not really sure that was really necessary and probably has stunted the growth of these trees a little bit maybe a lot um, but it's kind of a mistake that at the time I realized it was a mistake or something I really shouldn't have done um, it's too late to fix, you know? It would be a real pain in the butt to get these trees out of the ground here and they're really large containers that they were in. Um, but you can see that mostly they're growing out this way. We've trained them in that direction because the figs in the patio, I wanted to give them as much room and sunlight as I could. But I think I wanna let these trees get some size I think that's the goal. I mean, they're only really three feet apart from each other. Uh, yeah, about three to three and a half to four feet, somewhere in there. But I think I want to let these guys get some size. Um, if they get too big, maybe I will trim them back because this is where all the figs are. And the sun goes right over here. So if these cherry trees get too big, they're definitely going to shade out a, a large portion of the patio, which is not what I want. I mean, um, especially because they're only cherries. Cherries are really good uh, purchased from the store compared to what you're able to grow yourself. So for me, there's no real reason to, um, to even really grow cherries. Um, if I can get them as a really easy source of food, then um, why not, right? But uh, if I was limited on the number of land I had or the amount of space I had like I am I would not grow cherries again and I would not grow cherries in this climate I would choose other things now if we look here at my pretty much a hedge of container fruit trees that are being overwintered here for the winter time they're you know they're staying here all winter guys I'm sure so a lot of you have probably seen that video of me talking about this some are quite big. I mean, that's huge. For being in a container, um, I wouldn't be surprised maybe if some of this stuff over time, because it's sitting here for so long, breaks through the container and roots itself in the ground. And if that were to happen, things will be a bit more trickier in terms of pruning and really containing this whole area and making things behave the way they should. You know, there's a lot of vigorous growth on these trees, specifically the standards. And I have the standards getting more sunlight. Um, the shorter they go, it goes down to the front here because the shorter trees get hit with the sunlight first. And the larger trees in the back will get the sunlight next. So the, the standards I'm gonna prune like crazy. 
I'm really going to go nuts in the standards. Whereas something like a dwarf, I may not prune nearly as hard. But if it is a, you know, something like an apple that has spurs, you can see here, I'll just leave a lot of the spurs. Let me try to zoom. I can't really zoom in, guys. But, you know, I'll leave a lot of those spurs and take out a lot of that vegetative growth and keep the trees small that way. Um, we have a lot of perennials that we've planted in here that you may not really be able to see anymore, like echinacea, you can see. We have some uh, sedum over here. The things that I uh, took your advice on, I asked you guys sometime last spring what I should plant in this area because it has a pretty ugly look to it with all the containers just sitting along here. And you guys gave me some really great recommendations. I've been to so many botanical gardens. I've been to so many beautiful places. I just never took the time, I think, to put together a list. And some of you guys have certainly helped me out with that. I've been to more botanical gardens and things like that since. And I think we got a nice little array of plants in here. It's going to be really packed. But um, it's going to look beautiful. And I'll show you guys all about that come spring. We have here a new bed that we created, and hopefully you guys saw the video on that. We talked about how we're creating this bed and how to create a bed, the best way I know to create a bed. We've also freed up this little area here. This is where my LSU tiger tree was and the raspberry latte that we planted the old Italian man way. We dug those up and then this whole area is going to be used as a portion of the garden bed. And we'll grow things like corn here and squash. Uh, we'll have artichokes along this portion here. And then we'll have tons of melons and tomatoes in this bed. We still have carrots in here, by the way, which I can just come in here anytime I want and get myself really tasty sweet carrots. And they're really big too. They're not really growing a whole lot, but hey, it is what it is. Um, you know, we've also got garlic in here. We really took, we spent quite a bit of time and effort and money planting more garlic. And I think some of the garlic here is a bit too big for this time of the year. But uh, we should be really successful this year with our garlic and uh, we have a lot of it. So I'm really happy, it's my favorite food. It's probably my favorite vegetable. Um, Behind me are the peaches, and we have got a real nice pruning video coming up at some point, pruning these peaches here. A spy aid, you can really see the form of them. See that? That three-tiered system. And basically, just to go over it really quickly, we're going to take out all the three-year-old wood. This is now three years old. We will cut all that back. The two-year-old shoots, as you see, there and there and there and this guy here all those two-year-old shoots we will leave them let them fruit quite heavily and then hopefully these one-year-old shoots here will become those two-year-old shoots next year and we'll kind of be recycling that wood year after year giving us a nice crop of peaches off of these trees every year and in an espiade form we also have the shallots covered here pretty heavily with mulch, and we actually have leeks still, but the leeks really have not done anything for me this year. Very disappointing, but they were in a very shaded spot underneath these peach trees, and it was really optimistic, I think, to get a crop off of them. If I go over to the other side here, we got the grapevines, and this is a grapevine that died, but it came back from the roots, and I could graph something to this, but I think I'm going to put a new vine that I've talked a lot about. It's called Everest Seedless, sold by Double A Vineyards. It's a Concord style grape. It's larger, it's seedless, it's disease resistant, and we should get a really nice crop of grapes off of all three of my grape vines. Uh, I should say two of them actually, because that new vine we're going to put in is brand new and probably won't fruit for us. Um, I really want these honeyberries to start taking off. 
this is a really nice fruit, guys. I love this fruit. And you should really be uh, reading up on these things if you don't know what they are. I have them all over the yard at this point. They're very difficult to see, aren't they? It's getting really dark. But um, one of my favorite fruits now. And I hope I can get them a little sweeter than I have had them in the past. We've also put in a lot of trees in this area of the yard here. Lots of strawberries. Lots of different things. This is a persimmon here called Sejo. We put in a lot of dwarf apple trees that we had over there in that section with all the containers. Uh, we freed up some room and put them over here. And you know, these dwarf apple trees, I'm gonna really let these things go for the most part. I'm gonna do very minimal pruning because I need them to get over in height of these dwarf apple trees. <laughs> Um, the sun definitely comes up over here, so they'll be fine in that respect. But for in this portion of the day, it's uh, shaded. We may get some light over here, but not really until we get to like somewhere over here and down to where the sun sets will these trees get most of their light. So we want to make sure that uh, these trees back here are a bit taller than these. This four tree planting here but um, it shouldn't take us very long to achieve that maybe a year or two you can see I've got a lot of grafts um, on these on these dwarf apple trees here and we've talked about these and hopefully they'll fruit for me next year um, I know that's tough to see but I'm kind of wearing gloves and I can't really work the camera as well as I'd like <laughs> but there's a uh, probably in this four tree planting is about 12 varieties so that's pretty cool um, I'm working to add more and more varieties to this little thing here but um, I may stop at a certain point and just say you know enough's enough let's let's try mo more apples before I keep adding more um, we have things like Swiss chard which I've actually talked about in pretty decent length um, in my garden plans video, this stuff is still going. It's insane. Um, I could have harvested a lot of this before a frost came in and wiped out most of it, but it's still growing. It's been growing here since April, and now we're in December. And this is the longest season thing I think I have, other than maybe kale, but uh, it's extremely long seasoned. Um, we are going to put in some muscadine grapes along this wire. We need to tighten this wire up. We'll put the muscadines in here. That should be hardy to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, you know, in, in an effort to kind of grow disease-free grapes, we're going to grow muscadines. And uh, they'll also be a bit later in the season than your typical European-style grape, which would be really nice because that way not all the grapes come at once. Really trying to adjust this camera for you guys. There we go. We've also planted um, alpine strawberries. We, we transplanted them in this section of the yard. We've got our plums over here. Two plums, as you see there, they're very small, but they're on standard rootstock, so they're gonna grow like crazy. We have the kiwi vine here called Anna, and we've talked about this, right? They're gonna be a spy A just like my peaches. These plums will be. And then this kiwi vine will travel along this wire here all the way up. And uh, this will kind of form a nice little canopy underneath the kiwi vine. And we may have to move some things, adjust where things are. I'm not sure, but in the meantime, I'm just planting like crazy. Every little spot there is, there will be a plant. And I've realized that's really important, guys, um, for mycorrhizae for you know so many different reasons for the ecosystem you know the bees the insects everything uh, this area back here is really getting supercharged with fertility where to be honest with you this whole thing is not fertile at all it is just completely uh really the worst soil on my property nothing grows here grass doesn't grow i mean look look at this bare soil here compared to just behind me 
You know what I mean? It's quite a difference. And uh, the whole reason, I think, is because when we moved here, we had to build this fence, and we stuck a whole bunch of cheap soil here. I remember doing it as a kid. We stuck a whole lot of soil here to build this up, to create that berm. And all that soil that is just horrible, nothing really grows in it. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, but we're, we're slowly building this up. And uh, in no time, I mean, look at this whole area. We just started this thing out, put two persimmons in here, two pears, we put a honeyberry in, we put some, uh, oh man, what is the name of that? It's a Josta berry right over here that's really small. You know, we're slowly planting and we just keep adding more and more mulch into this pile and let this slowly break down over time. I just keep adding it, you know, whatever it is, throw it in there. I don't care if it really breaks down all that quickly, you know? It'll break down, it'll it'll turn into compost, it'll provide so much nutrients to these trees um, that I won't have to do a single thing to them. Won't have to water them, won't have to feed them. Nada. Nada, nada. So, I mean, that's most of the yard. Um, still a lot to prune, and that's kind of what I want to show you guys in the future of me being outside. I'm gonna to try to be as outside as I can for you all. We have my strawberry bed here, which is looking kind of vacant, but will fill in super nicely come spring. And you know what? We're gonna plant some figs there, here, and in this raised bed, we will plant probably four to five to seven more. I'm not entirely sure what the spacing I want is or how many of these I'm gonna fit in here. Four feet is usually what I've done historically, and that's worked out well. But if these trees were, are gonna get large, like I'm kind of expecting them to, then uh, it may not be a good idea to space them so closely. It really all depends on this tree. If this tree lives and does well, then I will plant more trees in this raised bed. As for the greenhouse, we've got the tarp on it. It's kind of blown away, actually, now that I'm looking at it. We need to fix this up a little bit. Maybe even tighten these, these ropes, but uh, insulating this is key. And you can see in here, there's not really a whole much to look at, but there's just tons of trees in here. And they're all doing all right. Nothing's damaged. Nothing is... Uh, complaining they're staying warm with this heater we've talked about this and uh yeah that's that part of the yard let's let's continue on this winter tour i'm really excited for spring guys i don't know about you guys <laughs> i would really like it to be spring um we need to prune my little ruby here i don't know if you guys can see this tree and how weird it is this thing grows sideways man um, I may actually thin this out as well or prune this butterfly bush back. I may just chop it back to a certain height every year uh, in a form of pilarding. Just like I've done to my mulberry tree down here, which I'm going to show you guys in just a second. But I think I also want to prune the uh, Ron de Bordeaux a bit further. We'll sell, a, I think, well, we'll sell a few more cuttings off of that tree. My LSU purple, I've decided we're going to dig this one up. We're not going to put this one in the ground. I think it would do well in the ground. But I have other candidates that I'd rather have in the ground. My Taramo Unknown, this one's in a raised bed. And as you know, the uh, roots of fig trees cannot really handle anything below about 17 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've decided to mulch the exterior of the raised bed. We also put down rocks, all in an effort to keep the roots as warm as I can. We did a whole renovation to this bed here, the raspberries and the blackberries. We did a video on that, hopefully you guys saw it. But the same thing, you know, all along the house here will be fig trees that we're planting. Um, we've got some yacon that you can't see down in here. We'll probably have some Aztec broccoli back in here, for those of you who know what that is. 
Uh, I have a couple of crops I just want to throw back here. Same thing with a, a current tomato. And I'm just going to let it sprawl along here and reseed itself every year. Uh, but the figs, again, all along this house will be four feet apart. We'll put ten of them in total from you know this part here all the way down. And uh, we're going to bring back this mulberry tree. I think this is quite important. And we're going to bring this back. And we've already pilarded it, showed you guys how to do that. But I decided, you know what, we're going to graft onto this Girardi Dwarf Mulberry. And if I don't do that, I may end up just cutting this thing back as far as I can and killing it. Which I think would be horrible, wouldn't it guys? Three years of work down the drain. But what I could do is instead get some mulberry seedlings or cuttings rooted out and then graft Girardi onto it and then I can put in a bunch of Girardi trees along here in this little uh, this is probably about 10 feet this 10 feet stretch between the mulberry tree and the raised bed here where the raspberries are and I could probably put if I chop down this tree, the, the uh, Illinois Everbearing, all the way down to the base, I could probably fit in here three Girardi Dwarf Mulberries. And uh, that would be pretty good. I mean, in terms of production, it would be more. But And then here's the persimmon, guys. We pruned this thing. Hopefully you saw the video on that. We've also stuck in some... Uh, Rosianca cuttings in the ground of the persimmon. I'm just curious to see if they make it through the winter time, if they will root out, uh, rather than going through grafting and see what see what happens. You know, you never know. I don't know, but the uh, the mulberry tree or the uh, the persimmon tree I'm very excited for. It is huge. It's really looking strong. I'm really liking the form. This thing, I'm hoping, will prevent me from ever having to go to the store and buying persimmons again. So, this is my pride and joy right here. I'm sure some others will fruit in the ground for me. But this is going to be numero uno. And then we've also got the apple trees finally fixed, worked out. These things are really falling all over the place. We've added in lots of uh, organic fertilizer, guys. And we still have to prune these guys. But the organic fertilizer, we've added to just about everything. I got it all on clearance from Home Depot. There's enough organic material, organic fertilizer on these trees to really benefit them. I, I didn't put any on the mulberry tree because it grows as fast super fast as it is. I don't want it to grow any faster. Uh, but on just about everything, we've got it. It smelled up the area for a little bit. I think the neighbors were complaining. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's everywhere. Um, except for the figs and the mulberry. So, anyway guys, that is the tour. We are getting super dark. I could take you around this, the front of the house, but, yeah, more of the same, I guess. And uh, thank you guys if you got to this point. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'll catch you off in the next one. Take care.